So talking about shearing, I am joined uh, on the phone by Mark um, Barracliffe from the New Zealand Shearers, Shearing Contractors Association from out of Pew Pew. Good evening, sir. How are you, Sarah? Very well, thank you. How's the internet with six teenagers living with you in isolation? Yeah, definitely uh, handy. We've got unlimited, otherwise we'd be out the gate in the first five minutes. But um, What yeah, provider are you with? People so are. we're just with, we're with Spark and Happy Days. Well, we're going to be talking with Craig Young from Two Ends because the Vodafone people are quite pissed off, actually, about the unlimited only after midnight. So you're very lucky. And we're running a poll on that, actually, on the Farmers Weekly website, uh, farmersweekly.co.nz forward slash Sarah's country. 50% of people's internet is 25% worse. Uh, and the rest either no change or 50% plus worse. So, Mark, um, before we kick into things, has yours dropped off at all? Nah, we're, we're good. We're no change. We weren't super crazy quick, but we're just steady, so happy days. Yeah. <laughs> so on a note that you in your professional world are dealing with the uh, regulations coming around the what is an essential service for the shearers, shearing members that you represent, uh, obviously, m parts of sharing is flock welfare, and are you? Well, you're urging for farmers to talk to their contractors as soon as possible. What are some of the ways that farmers and sharing sharing contractors can keep themselves safe with from COVID nineteen? Yeah, well, well, obviously, our world's changed like everyone else's has, and um, we're just trying to promote good early communication between farmers and contractors just so you can plan things a bit further ahead because there's a lot more um, rules we've got to put in place now to keep A, the farmer safe and B, the um, employees as well. We'll keep each other safe really while we're in each other's environments. So even though the farmer may be in the middle of nowhere, the shearing crew could be coming from the middle of town. So town's coming to the country really. You've so got it's just a communication yarn, sorry. That's okay, no worries. You've got um, some declaration forms that are available on the website. Yeah, so we're just putting a few systems in place that everyone can follow quite easily from the farmer through to the employee and the contractor. So everyone knows what Perfect. each other's jobs are. And it's it's basically the whole country buying into this yarn to try and nip this in the bud. And um, we, we want to play our part, but we still want to be able to um, share the sheep in a timely manner. So... You know, agriculture is going to be our leader out of this hole, so we want to be there to support the, um, the agricultural industry. And planning for a four-week lockdown is one thing. Um, I've just had a question come in that someone's heard the lockdown is going to be extended to five weeks, so I don't have any um, reference of, of that exactly. But if they have said potentially longer, what's that going to impact going into the months into winter? Yeah, well, definitely there's a there's an end date that doesn't move, and generally that's once um, people's animals start to lamb. So that's uh, that's the big telling factor for a lot of us. Whatever part of New Zealand you're in, you either got to get them shorn or crutched before lambing. So at some point, everyone's going to get affected at different times around the country. Yeah, there might be a few farmers out there that have to um, get on a handpiece themselves that they might not be too happy about otherwise. So it's important that we follow very strictly the, the guidelines around the essential services, um, Mark. And where can people go to get more information? Um, we've got just our contractors' website. We've um, got everything on the, on the page here for the public to view, for anyone to do with sharing. Just just to spread the love around the whole sharing industry, really, and um, then everyone's on the same page. So just um, nzsharing.co.nz. On a last note, you've got um, all your sort of tucker places shut down that the shearers love to call in on the way, and, you know, we, we don't have shearers cooks as much as we used to back in my day when I was a child. Mark, how are they getting on? Are they living off pies from BP? <laughs> Yeah, well, oh, there's lots of different things going on, but yeah, even food preparation and bringing out food is creating um, a bit of an issue. So everyone's got different ways of dealing with it, from um, having a cook on site to just bringing your own food. So whatever floats your boat, really, Sarah. As long as you, as long as you get fed, it's a, 
couple of hours work here, um, you, you do a decent feed. So, um, yeah, most of the boys are making sure they're not going hungry anyway, I'll tell you that for free. Oh, and um, <laughs> you've got a whole house full to keep not hungry. Uh, do you have a place there, Mark, in Pew Pew, that you can escape, a bit of a man cave? Yeah, we've got a small um, uh, man cave outside, if you like, full of toys and stuff. So uh, trouble is with my um, all my teenagers now, they generally follow me out, so it can be busier out there than um, than in the house. But it's great having them all home and plenty of battens and batten staples and spare hammers at my place. So, uh, yeah, they're loving um, rebattening old fences. So. Yeah, they'll be hoping it doesn't go beyond four weeks, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I know there's a lot of Lincoln University students, parents who are very happy to have them at home as well, a bit of free labour. So good on you, Mark Barracliffe, who is the president of Sharing Contractors Association, joining us live tonight out of Pew Pew. This is Sarah's Country.